What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Raps. Don't forget to check out my new website, ckraps.com, where you can get exclusive contents, 4K footage, disassembly videos, amazing camera angles, discussion and location board, that sort of thing. I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description below for you. Now today, I'm doing another video on the Will It Wrap series. So this video series is composed of videos of different things that we're going to try wrapping. Right now, we're doing a cinder block wall. The cinder block wall is painted, okay? So this is not just bare cinder block, this is painted, uh, more with a matte paint than anything else. Now, will that promote a little bit of adhesion? Maybe it will, uh, but if you're doing a bare cinder block, it might have a little bit less adhesion, but we're here to find out, uh, see, what, see what it's like. This is a very textured finish, similar to the ceiling tile video that I did there, uh, the ceiling tile being even more textured. I assume, I'm gonna assume, that the material that we used on the ceiling tile will adhere just as well to this wall. We're gonna check this out by pushing into the indentations and things like that by bridging the gaps and then pushing in. Typically, that was what you would do with a wall like this. Now, does it make sense to wrap a brick wall with a wood grain vinyl? Probably not. Uh, you're gonna get a textured finish that looks like brick as opposed to wood. Uh, even though it does have the texture finish of wood in the film, it's gonna be like a weird thing. But you could do this in other colors if you wanted to. You can do it in red, green, orange, regular black, whatever you wanted to. Uh, you can also do the wall in brick. It'll give the brick print an actual texture to the print itself, which will, which will be pretty cool, I think. Uh, so first of all, we're gonna need a couple of things here. And everything that I'm using today, you can find in the description below. I'll put links to everything there for Amazon. Uh, we're going to be using 70% isopropyl alcohol, microfiber cloth, heat gun, a blade if you need one if we're going to be cutting it out. Uh, we are going to cut off a piece of obviously eventually. Uh, we won't really need a, bl a blade for this demonstration right here. Uh, a glove potentially and a squeegee, okay? The squeegee is obviously going to help us lay this down a little bit faster while a glove will allow us to push into these indentations here a little bit easier. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to test two films. We're going to test Avery and we're going to test Vivid and we're going to see how it goes. Uh, the Avery is SW900. It's not particularly a wall wrap film, so it's not specific to that. Uh, there, are specific, um, there are specific wall wrap films out there, but this is the one I'm using, SW900, is not a specific wall wrap, wrap film. Uh, sure, it could be good on glass and really smooth areas. Uh, more meant for compound curves, like, you know, cars, obviously, uh, very smooth finishes, high energy surfaces, that sort of thing. Let's start off with prepping the wall, and then I've got my, my two pieces of vinyl right here already ready to go. Let's just wipe the wall down a little bit, uh, you know, make sure we don't have too much dust on it. I shouldn't actually spray it. I should actually spray the cloth because that's going to make sure that no droplets of anything kind of get in there. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do a section here to show you what it sort of looks like or what it's sort of like when we wrap the wall and what we could expect as far as uh, or what my personal opinion will be as far as adhesion goes and longevity. Uh, I'm not going to go below this wire right here. Now this is a great option, obviously, if you want to do maybe a wall in your house, uh, you want to wrap that and it's more smooth. Most people don't have cinder block walls in their house, uh, but you want to wrap a wall just in general in your house from maybe white to like wood grain. Again, to replace the whole wall with wood might cost you a fortune while buying the vinyl and doing it yourself can be a lot more affordable. Uh, again, you could do something like this and maybe you have a cinder block wall in your garage at home. You could wrap over it with whatever you want just to change it up or you could paint it. I mean, the painting was okay. Uh, let's first start off with the uh, wood grain. I'm going to cut this piece a little bit smaller, I think. It's a little bit big. So I'm just going to do this section right up in here. So I'm going to cut off a bit of this bottom section right around there. I, I like this wood grain a lot, actually. It's very thin and it has a very high tack. So it works, it actually works very well. Um, sticking it into recesses shouldn't be a problem. So we want to basically tack this somewhere as straight as possible. And then we're going to peel off the, the release liner. So the film is already adhering pretty well. Uh, it's not just going to fall off. So let's just position this a little bit and get that nice and flat right there. I don't want to I don't want to lay in, uh, it's actually going to be impossible to lay into all these creases, all, all these recesses between the brick because you can't lay in from the side and the bottom. If it was just lines coming across like this, straight across, 
it would be easier to lay the film into the actual recess. But because we have uh, recesses running up and down as well, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because we can't lay in to the recess this way, I'm not sure my camera there, this way, and then also lay in from the bottom. It's gonna be really impossible to do actually. So we would stretch in in most cases. This is not the highest tack film on the market, market, but it is a higher tack film. It's not crazy sticky, but we'll see. We'll see how, how it goes. Uh, it's got some pretty good bond already. I'm just gonna try and stay uh, over top of the recesses. I don't wanna push in, and I wanna keep my film very flat. This makes it a lot easier to actually squeegee if we don't squeegee the film into the recesses because it'll start to bunch up and, and change the angle of the film on the bottom if we start uh, changing it all up here and start laying in. So we wanna come right across and bridge all those gaps to keep the film looking as smooth as possible. It actually has a really cool look. Uh, if you were doing this in just black, it would probably be pretty cool. Another option here is you don't necessarily have to stretch into all these recesses. You don't have to. Um, you, could, you could actually just bridge them and you can sort of see them still. They're not terrible. They're not fantastic, but they're not terrible. We're going to show you both angles here. I'm going to move the camera a little bit more for you. So I'm just going to finish up the bottom. And I got the the plugs in my way here, so I'm just going to cut a relief cut around it. And again, I'm not trying to make this really fancy. I'm just going to do this really quickly. There we go. I just kind of ballparked it. I laid pretty close to the plug. It's not perfect though. All right. And I'm just going to trim off this section on the bottom. Let's just cut on the brick, whatever. I'm just gonna destroy my blade right there, that's okay. All right, gives you a perspective of what this looks like right now. Now, we're gonna heat it. We're gonna bust out our heat gun and heat this sucker up, especially in between all these gaps. So I let the film sort of pre-shrink. When a film moves, it's basically pre-shrinking and tightening down. And then we take our finger with our glove on and we're going to push into all these nice little gaps and recesses. So it does make the finish of the cinder block show a lot more. When I remove this, we're going to see exactly how much bond it has. Uh, then we're going to wrap it with Avery and see how much bond that has. pushing quite firm with my finger. You don't want to heat the film up too much because your finger will drag uh, the actual film and you'll get a wrinkle. So the, a, a good balance between uh, heating and using your glove to stretch into these recesses. The finger is actually one of the best options. Uh, you could use like a foam roller or something that might not, it might not press down hard firm enough, but it might work in some situations. So again, we pre-shrink everything and we just push pretty firmly because we want to get in there. It's pretty crazy how much the film actually contours in and around all this stuff. This is a deeper recess here, so it takes a little bit more effort and a little bit more work. This could be obviously time consuming if we're doing a full printed wall like this. And stretching into every single one of these grooves could be a little bit more time consuming. This down here. There we 
we go. A little bit more to do. And then we'll go over the actual face of it. So again, air release obviously is going to work very well when it comes to squeegeeing the air out because of the texture of the actual brick. I usually do a couple of passes just to make sure we, we do one pass and get everything down and then we do another pass and really heat it up and push in there. And then we'll just do this one top line right here. Amazing. Let's go over the face of it with a bit of heat. Not too much. Use my softer squeegee here. And let's really, let's really define these brick. I mean, you can't really even see the wood grain anymore on this particular finish. I think more so because it's such a, a dark finish. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to see the, the wood grain in it. but we're really starting to define uh, this brick right now. See, this one popped out, right? So, may not always be the best option. To stretch into these areas. Now, this could be due to a couple of reasons. Maybe the film doesn't have a high enough tack. Maybe uh, I didn't clean in here enough, or I could have used primer or something like that, some kind of adhesive promoter to actually stretch into this area right here. Uh, it's not terrible. I mean, you know, the, the, the cracks are kind of not very consistent and even to begin with, so I mean, it's not terrible. I'm just gonna use my hand here, it's gonna be a little bit easier. I'm just sort of add a profile to this, or sorry. It's gonna show a profile a little bit more now with all the brick showing through. So the faster go with your hand, I find, so let's do that. Plus my hand is able to sort of push into these bumps a little bit nicer. Awesome, so that's something what we're looking at right there. Looks pretty cool, I think it looks pretty cool. So I've got you in for uh, a better perspective here on the side, just to show you what we're looking at. Now again, we can't really see the texture of the wood grain so much anymore because the brick shows through so much more. But we can see how well it goes around and into these areas. A little bit of patience, a little bit of heat. Again, some adhesive promoter might not be a bad idea when it comes to doing the recesses like that. A lot more time consuming in the end, but it does look very cool. Now that we've got the black done, we're gonna peel this off. We're gonna see sort of what the adhesion feels like, and then we're gonna do this with Avery SW900 and see what happens. So let's grab a corner, because I didn't tack this down very much over here. Let's see if I can get a corner here. Sometimes it's not all that easy. There we go. It's got some, it's got some decent bonds. This is actually going to cure a little bit more over time. So it's not like it's gonna be only this strong. It's gonna get stronger as 
the film and the adhesive cures. It's gonna take about 48 hours to three days, so two to three days, 48 to 72 hours. Let's peel that off. It's got some pretty good crab. Uh, pretty cool right here, right? You can see the actual texture of the finish or of the brick in the film. That'll stay like that until I reheat it and it'll all go away once I heat it. Let's grab the red. So no real need to clean or wipe this down because it's already, it's already wiped down. Now this is a much, much, much lower initial tack film. Uh, is it stronger in the ends? I don't necessarily believe so, but we're gonna find out. SW900 is a pressure sensitive film. So this is not the film that you should typically be using for a cinder block wall, but this could probably, will probably work on a wall that has a smoother finish with a higher energy level. that. Again, it's not just going to fall off the wall. So what we want to do is sort of get it uh, as the shape that we need it, straight as possible. And we're going to do very similar to what we did before, start squeegeeing this stuff down. Uh, I can feel like it feels like it's not really grabbing quite as much, um, but it might do the job. You never know. This is the whole idea of these videos is something like this just might do the job. You might be kicking, you know, it has some red kicking around and it might work. Uh, I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit more. Keep that going. Now Avery is very thin, so it, it if you don't squeegee it nicely, um, you could get really wrinkled up around the bottom uh, simply because you might be moving it a little bit too much at the top and all of a sudden, or you're not squeegeeing it symmetrically enough at the top and all of a sudden the bottom becomes difficult to do. Because you start creating, uh, you start bending the vinyl in a way that's not natural to it, to the way it wants to go. It just wants to stay flat, it's a flat wall. I'm not saying the wall is perfectly flat, but it's mostly flat. Let's cut this bottom piece off again like last time. Oh, my blade is super dull, so let's snap one off. Didn't even cut that. <laughs> let's try that one more time. Let's just cut it over here first. Oh, it did cut it, some of it. Let's see if we can just rip it along that line. There we go. That's good enough. Let's take our heat gun now, and again, squeegee into the channels. We use our glove and the heat gun. So I want everything to sort of warm up, glass out, not too much heat. So this is not really adhering at all in the recesses. Um, this again would make it so it's not really a great option to wrap a wall with, a wall, a wall like this. But again, this is just sort of testing a product and seeing what we can and cannot do. It's not bad. We go over it really thoroughly with some heat. Now, will this last? I feel like this is a lot less likely to last in these recesses than the vivid wood grain film would. I'm just trying to, because I have to heat it so much, I'm trying to just push down in the recesses. Because if I drag my finger across, what happens is I'm going to get wrinkled up. Still lifting out of here. But, oh, it's still coming back out over here now. I'm trying. Coming back out of here now. And it does show, it's a little bit thinner than what we just used, but it's also lighter in the color. So you're going to see the texture of the brick a lot more. It's going to give you a perspective right here. I'm being about just as thorough, if not more thorough, than I was last time. I mean, at least as thorough. I'm definitely being more thorough, in my opinion. Yeah, so it doesn't really, it's still coming out of here again. This one managed to stay down. It's not quite as tight of a recess, but it is lifting a little bit. This is a much lower recess, this one right here. I, I remember that from before, the black panel that I had on there. So 
this one might last a little bit longer. Again, these these recesses, these channels here, they're they're going to vary in depth and size and width and things like that. They don't they don't remain consistent all the way through, as you can see with the wall. You know, this one's thinner, this one's wider, this one's wider, this one's more. It's not really necessarily deeper, but it's got a sharper angle in it. Uh, so with, with the sharper angle in it, yes, it's lifting out a little bit more. Um, again, this becomes more complicated when we want to wrap into areas like this because the tighter the recess, the more likely it is to fail in this area right here. Let's just see what we can do around here. I bet you the bond is probably pretty decent. Uh, Avery, you're looking at basically 72 hours for this to be full bond as well. But even after heating it like this, the bond is probably pretty decent. So I'm just going to get the rest of the brick down and then we're going to see what it's like when we remove it. Uh, just because it's not sticking in the recesses I mean, doesn't mean that you couldn't make it happen if you spent enough time on it. There are more practical and more efficient solutions to, to wrapping brick than using SW900. It also films that cost quite a bit less. Uh, you don't necessarily need a cast film to do this. Calendar will do the job. Calendar films meaning they don't really uh, have a lot of pliability or conformability to them. They don't heat and stretch the same way at all. Calendar films are very much more rigid, but they do, sh and they also do shrink quite a bit. So a calendar film, a calendar film can be an issue in these recesses here, uh, because if it does start to shrink, it's going to want to pull out even more. So having something that's a higher tack with a calendar film would be much more beneficial than something with a lower tack. Let's just sort of see how this feels. Uh, I'll actually bring you in so you can look at it, and then we'll see how it feels to remove it. So we can see some of the air in this area right here, and there's some air. These are just popping out. Not a whole lot I can do when it comes to that. Even this one, it's a bit more shallow down here. It's got some air. So I, if I took more time with heating it and pushing it down and heating it and pushing it down, yeah, it'd probably stay down for a while. Maybe it's down forever. Uh, if I hit that nice post-heat temperature, Some of this I didn't even do, as you can see, but just wanted to give you a perspective of what the texture and the finish looks like. Now that we've got all that uh, down, most of it down, we're just gonna peel it off, see what it feels like, and uh, that's about it. So much, much, much lower tack, like much lower. Even, even through this section here, it's much lower. So this, Again, not the best solution when it comes to wrapping a wall, but just showing you what would happen, what it looks like, what you can and cannot do. Guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful. If it was, don't forget to give it a like. If you want to see more videos, don't forget the subscribe button. Again, don't forget to check out ckwraps.com for exclusive content. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care.